Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 355 of How Do You Write? I'm Rachel Heron. So glad that you're here with me today as we are doing a bonus mini episode. And you know that I love to do these. These are specifically for my patrons who are at the Patreon level of $5 a month and above. You can ask me any question and then I gather them all together like a bundle of flowers, a bouquet of flowers. That's the word. I'm a writer. And answer them here to the best of my ability. So let's jump in. And as always, a huge thank you to my patrons. No matter the level you are at, even those who have been and left or might not come in for a while, I understand the finances change all the time. That is always okay with me. And I really, really appreciate you and anything that you are moved to give to allow me to do this work and to spend this time doing this kind of thing. And I hope you enjoy the essays. All right, let's get into the questions because they're fabulous. All right, this one comes from Rukma. Um, Rukma says, new patron with a mini coaching question. I've been told over and over by authors, writing coaches, everyone that having a writing community is key. I love the descriptions on your podcast of your retreats and really long for a creative community. What are your recommendations for finding and creating such a community? I've tried to create virtual workshop groups from online classes I've taken, attended meetups, et cetera, but the group always falls apart because people's other commitments take over. How can I find or create a writer's group slash writing community slash coven that's reliable? Okay, a couple of things for this amazing question uh, that I want to hit. Number one, inline, uh, sorry, Online groups can be just as powerful as in-person groups, but for me, they have always served different purposes. So I like to have my writing community of writers that surround me online. And then I also like to have the in-person, very close circle of friends, circle of writers that we actually go away and write together and hang out in cafes and um do the in-person things. So my answer to this is to steal as much as you can. You steal. So let me tell you, when I moved to New Zealand, I didn't have any writing friends. I knew a couple of New Zealand writers, but not well. And I knew that I would be joining Romance Writers of New Zealand, even though I don't write romance anymore, because I knew I would find friends there. And it is not about finding friends, and you may have already experienced this. Um, it is about stealing them. It is about going in and making gut judgments, listening to your heart and your soul when you walk into a room full of writers. Who are the people that attract you most? Who are the people that you think, oh my gosh, I want to hear her talk some more? I want to do what she's doing. I love her energy. And then this is a very um, deliberate thing that I do. I go over and I try to make friends with them. And I find sometimes the best experience that I have from this, um, the best results are when I'm completely honest with them. And I say things like, I, I don't have any writing friends here. Um, would you like to be my friend? That sounds really strange uh, coming from a 50-year-old woman. But do you want to hang out and have coffee sometime? And when I moved here, I had a bunch of different little coffee dates all over the place. And the very first meeting that I ever went to, because I'd already met some people in the Facebook group, um, gone out to coffee with a couple of them. But when I went to this very first meeting, there were three people at that meeting. And I was like, I, I love them. I love them. I don't want to be friends with them. And I just kind of um, let my desperation wash over them, but hopefully in a charming way. And it wasn't, in, it wasn't for a couple of months because I think then Christmas happened, but a couple of months later, I would, I had reached out to one of them on Facebook, even though I hate Facebook and maybe gotten their phone number. And then one of them texted me and said, Hey, we're getting together um, for lunch. Do you want to join? And I was like, yeah, that's cool. I'll do that. But inside I was doing cartwheels and um, yeah, I stole them from that meeting. Everybody else there was fabulous, fine, fun, great but we react differently with different people, right? And we can make those choices about the people that we know are going to light us up. So when I meet those people that I think will light me up, I, tr I work hard at being their friend, not manipulatively, but deliberately. How can I present myself to them in a way that makes 
them want to sit down with me for 45 minutes and have a writing session or an hour lunch. Um, so I, I like to do that in person. Go to different writing groups. Go to meetup.org. Um, find where the writers are. There's going to be nine people at that meetup that you don't ever want to see again. And one person who's really interesting. Um, get their number. My wife laughs at me because I am I'm blatant about getting people's phone numbers. And maybe this comes from being in recovery. But uh, when I meet somebody that I like, I say things like, um, I, I could always use another friend. And I know that sounds corny, but maybe you'll want to get coffee sometimes. Can I, um, can I just text you so that I have, so that you have my number? And then I get on my phone and I say, what's your number? And then I open it up to the text thing and I put in the number and I send them a text and I send, hi, it's Rachel. And then I say, okay, now you've got my number. And then I leave it up to them. Oh my God, I'm telling you how to date or writing friends. This is not what I expected to be doing. I leave it up to them. If they respond back with something like, it was great to meet you, let's get that coffee. Then I follow up. If I never hear from them again, then great. I was awkward. They're going to pretend like I never sent them that text. Hopefully I never run into them again. Or if I do, I, we will both politely pretend that I never did that. And that has absolutely happened. Um, but that's how I get people's numbers. And that's how I kind of reach out and... I say things like, I'm going to be over in your you know, side of town, going to the bookshop. Let me know if you want to grab a coffee. If I don't hear from them again, I can, you can let that go. But the in-person thing for me is really an important component of my community. And having just two or three people is enough for me. Uh, I like more, of course, and I still continue to go to Romance Writers of New Zealand. It's fantastic. And I have some good friends in there, but I have some really great friends in there. The online thing is basically the same. Keep taking classes, keep going to um, any kind of group, anything. And when you see somebody chatting in the Zoom function and they're saying funny things and they're being hilarious. And maybe if you hear them talk, if it's a if there's a talking session and you adore them, DM them, direct message them and say, this is weird, but I'm building my um, writing community. Do you want to share your info with me? I know it's, it's, it's so awkward, but rather than what a lot of people do is they open it up and they say, I want a writer's group, please writers come to me. And then they get these writers who don't match their energy or who aren't really interested in the same kind of things that you are. And then you try to set up a group together and then it falls apart when you are selective and flattering in a real honest and genuine way. Like I, I love what you're doing and I'd love to, you know, get to know you a little bit more. People want to stick around for that. And then you begin to build this little group. You can create a Facebook group. If people are still doing that, I have no idea, or a Slack channel or a discord group or any of those ways that you can stay connected. Um, but here's the second thing I want to say is that writing groups always fall apart. It is just like life in that everything's changing. Nothing is permanent in this life. I have had groups of my heart of people that I met with every week, um, people that sometimes I met with every day to write with. Like in Oakland, I had some people that were just my heart biggest friends um, that I met with every week, every sometimes every day to write. And then I moved and things change, life changes. Writing groups will always fall apart. And that is why I believe in having multiple communities. I believe that my little writing group, Rachel Says Write, is always such a great writing community. I love it. Um, that is one of my communities I have my group of students that is another incredible community. I have um, my in-person crew here. I have my in-person crew in Oakland when I go back to visit. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I have this mastermind writers group that has been meeting off and on for years. And we just had a meeting the other day. There are five of us in it. Only four of us could come. We haven't seen each other. We haven't talked in like six months, maybe seven months. And it was so great to connect. That can be another really good way to do it. It's just set up an online Zoom meeting every month at a certain time and get three to 10 people and just have it no matter who comes. Like only three of you can come this week. Great. Uh, that, that, for that month, have a chat, rotate around and um, talk about what's going on in your lives. Super, super helpful. And it, and it does take time it takes time to create and they will fall apart, but we create more and we just keep doing it. And it's such a great question. And yes, um, please keep doing it. Anyone who's listening, you can join my Onward Writing Slack group. There's like 800 people in there and it's very, it's very quiet. There's not much conversation there, but you will notice that the people who are talking 
they're fantastic. They're engaged. Um, so come and, and be engaged in that and maybe direct message somebody and get a friend. So you're welcome to join that. That's always in my links in my show notes. So um, that'll be in there. Please, you would be welcome to join. Thank you for this question, Rukma. Okay, let's see. Um, Lizbeth, Lizbeth M says, I hate that I keep not writing. I want to sit down, write my outline and get going, but I keep not doing it. For years, I wrote in circles that led me nowhere, which is why I'm trying the outline method now. What would you recommend? Oh, I feel you. This is a perennial problem for writers. Everyone listening can identify with this feeling. What I like to do is I like to arbitrarily choose things to place around my writing practice to safeguard it. And what I mean by that is I choose something I call time boxes and I set arbitrary countable goals. So for this, if you want an outline to write this book to, give yourself a time box of say one week. You get one week to write this outline. If the outline is not done in one week, okay, you're out of time. Now you're going to move on to the next thing, which is the writing. And if you start writing and then you get stuck, maybe you're going to have to go back and do more work on that outline after you get the writing done for the day, but you have one week or whatever your time box is, whatever seems reasonable to you to get that outline done. Um, if you, um, some people don't write well to outlines. Um, I think there's a question coming up to that. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a moment, but the next thing after you time box your first initial goal is you set up something that is countable. Either words, if you're first drafting, count your words. I want to get X number of words done a day or time in the chair during which you're not doing anything else. You are not allowed to look at the internet. You're not allowed to look at your phone, put your phone absolutely in a different room. Um, best case scenario is if you go to a cafe where you don't know the Wi-Fi password and you don't have your phone because you left it in the car and there's just the computer, you will write because you'll get so bored. So you'll say to yourself that for one hour, three times a week, I will sit down and I will write. Or you will say, I want to write 700 words a day, five days a week. Those are your rules. And then you let yourself off the hook for any goodness of the work, any worthwhileness, any well done You Just like my words, um, you want them to be as sloppy as that. All you are looking for is production. All you're looking for is to get some stuff on the page that pleases you. Do you like it? Is it fun? Is it playful in any way? Even if you're writing about deep, dark, heavy grief stricken things. Um, where can you find the joy in the, the, the part of the, of producing these words. And I know it's easier said than done, but we have to write terrible words that are bad and that feel like they're going in the wrong direction, completely the wrong direction. And then we shake it off like a dog shakes off water after they get out of a Creek. We don't care. We do not care. If we have hit our goal, which is we have written the 700 words or whatever your goal is for that day, or you have spent the time in the chair working on writing new words, then that's all that matters. And you get to congratulate yourself on that. And the brain that says, but those are really terrible words and you're going to throw them out in the future. You say, shut up. Please don't speak to me like that. We, you don't know what those words are going to turn into and future me is going to handle them. Future me has this present me just did the work and I'm awesome. I did the work, fantastic. And tomorrow I'm going to do a little bit more. Uh, so don't worry about writing in circles. We all do that. We have to do it. Um, don't worry if you don't get your outline completed. Some of us can't write to outlines. I know I can't. Um, what matters is keeping showing up on your time schedule that you have set for yourself and keep adjusting the goal. Keep working on what exactly you want and need. Keep readjusting that every week, but do the work. You have to do the work. You have to do the terrible work that doesn't make any sense. And that is writing. That's writing folks. And it's um, hard. And yeah, so my advice is just time box yourself a goal to get that outline done and then make some goals to start the writing and just show up and do it. Doesn't matter if it's good. It won't be good. It won't be good. So embrace that. It will not be good. It won't feel good. And that's okay. You still get to be proud of yourself that you did the work and someday future you will fix all that. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, okay. 
And Linda says, uh, I'm working on my sentence outline after skimming and reading my memoir first draft. Since this is my first attempt at writing a book, I'm finding that I have 116 scenes and 34 chapters. I'm the person, I'm the type of person who likes to work with spreadsheets and I see the world better that way sometimes. I made a spreadsheet of my sentence outline with a column for each scene, one for the four act structure, intro, reaction, action, and resolution. Uh, which I do talk about in my book, Fast Draft Your Memoir. That's me, Rachel speaking. Um, that's where Linda got all this from. Going back to Linda's question. Uh, and another spreadsheet that lists one word for the big themes in my story. Family, friends, emotions, sailing, etc. I won't even go into the pie chart I made. I probably should just get to revision as I play around with my outline. I'm wondering if within the four-act structure, if it is possible to have the story look like intro, reaction, action, reaction, action, resolution, as in more than one buildup, if you will, to resolution. Is there a craft book or two you might recommend or a podcast that's co that covers this topic? As I noodle with story dynamics, I am seeing it play out this way. Is that even possible? Yes, absolutely. Um, we do naturally, we will naturally write stories that have action, reaction, action, reaction. What we are doing is we're trying to anchor them around some pivotal story structure moments. And I always, and when I am outlining, I think of only three things. I think of the inciting incident where our main character steps into this new world and the context shifting midpoint where something changes right at the midpoint so that the character can see everything in a new way and the dark moment where all is lost. Um, but within those points, we are doing action, reaction, action, reaction. We, um, this character may be taking steps to do things, but they're failing. We never want them to succeed completely. Even if we're writing a memoir, we don't want ourselves to succeed completely until the end of the book. Otherwise, there would be no reason for the book to exist if we have obtained all of our goals and dreams. So action and reaction absolutely works. Um, two books that I love are Anatomy of what is it called? Anatomy of Structure by John Truby and um, Larry Brooks. Wow, what is it called? Larry Brooks. Please hold. I cannot believe my brain just went blank. Story Engineering. Larry Brooks Story Engineering. It just went right out of my head. Those are two that I really like. I also love Jessica Brody's uh, Save the Cat Writes a Novel. Um, Oh, there's so many, but at this point that you have written your book uh, and you're getting into revision, I highly recommend Tiffany Yates Martin. She's been on the show. Um, her book, Intuitive Editing, uh, might be very handy at this point, but don't worry too much about structure. You're already seeing it. You're looking at it on your sentence outline. You know it, you can feel it. Just keep going. And yes, get into revision, start making those decisions um, and get into it, Linda, you've got this. So thank you for that. Awesome question. Uh, da, 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 let's see. And um, then we have a couple more questions from Linda. Thank you, Linda. Linda's using this the way it's meant to be used. Uh, okay, number one, I am, as you know, working on my memoir. Should I spend energy entering writing contests or working on other writing projects or prompts? I do recall in a po recent podcast that you suggested on focusing on your big project first, and then if you have time and have met your writing goals for the day, to have fun with other projects. Is that an accurate assessment of what you said? I feel like I should be getting my name out there, entering a contest or two, but don't know for sure if that will be a benefit while I'm working on this big project. My opinion and my opinion only, um, but writing contests will not get you very far, period. Um, they can be fun to enter. And some people like to enter them because they know that placing or winning a writing contest will give them a lot of wind in their sails. That'll feel good for them. And it will look nice on a query letter, sure, but an agent will never ask to see any part of your manuscript because you won a contest, unless it was like a national, like New Yorker contest or something like that, but they will not, I don't even know, I don't think the New Yorker runs them, but you know what I mean. Um, they don't really care that much. An agent, if you're looking for it for that, wants to know that your book sounds interesting and that your query letter is well-written. And then they're going to ask for more information. A writing contest is not going to assist in that. Getting your name out there, we can try and try and try and try to get our name out there, but it's not going to get out there very far because there's a lot of noise out there and people are very busy living their lives and doing their things with good reason. They have 
busy lives, so do we. So you can focus 100% of your energy and maybe 50 people will get to know your name and go, oh, I, I like that person. And maybe five of those 50 people will sign up for a mailing list if you had one. But is that worth 100% of your energy? Or can you put 100% of that creative energy that you have toward one big project with a goal, like I talked about at the top of the hour, what's your goal? So you've got your 1500 words done that you wanted to do today, still got some creative energy left, work on an essay, work on entering a contest, do something that's fun for you that gives you a little bit more energy that is delicious to you, but otherwise don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. What you want to be worrying about is spending time on your project. That's all. And after that, if it's fun for you, do it. But yes, that is a, a very accurate assessment of what I said and what I believe. So thank you. Uh, number two, on a similar note, do you recommend having an author website, especially early in the process as I am with writing memoir? Um, if I listen to Becca Syme, I should QTP on that, question the premise on that. Uh, yes, you should. What are the benefits and challenges? So again, when we're early in our first book, there's not much use for an author website. There's not also not much harm if it is something that gives you energy to do after you have done your work for the day on the project. If you want to fool around building a website or looking for someone to hire to build your website, do that, but don't let it come at the expense of time spent on your work itself. And as authors, we just want a very simple static website. Please don't look at my website as a terrible, terrible example. I've been blogging since 2002 and I really need a redesign and it's awful. Mine is like an example of what not to do. It's got too much stuff on there. It, yeah. We want a simple, clean website that has just what we write, maybe where we live if you want to share that information and a way to get a hold of you with your email address. Um, eventually you will want a newsletter subscription uh, uh, ability on that, but you need to have some kind of uh, thing plugged in so that you can be collecting email addresses of your readers who want to read you, but there isn't anybody knocking at our door at that stage. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, so normally I say, don't worry about this until you're a little bit further down the road. When we start querying or when we start moving towards self-publishing, that is when you will want to have the website up. But until then, until you're ready to push the book off your desk in one way or another, you don't need another website. So focus, focus on the work. Great QTP there. Uh, number three, on a recent podcast, you also talked about writing groups that critique by committee. I think that is what you said. Yes, that probably is what I said. That sounds like me. Um, I am in a group like that. And maybe I can suggest a change to our meeting format. Could you talk more about mastermind groups and how they work? Uh, that's all for now. So yes, you may not have success talking about a change to the meeting format if you are already in a critique by committee um, critique group. And that means a group of people that meet and they focus on a very small bit of your writing to talk about so that you can fix it. That is basically useless early on in a process. If you are almost done with your revision, say you're on your third revision and you're getting ready to um, query agents, then it can be useful to have a critique group look at that first chapter and really make it perfect. But until we have gone through three or four or five drafts, we don't even know if that first scene should belong in the book. It might not belong at all or it may need to be moved, but we will not be able to see that after we have given it to other people. They have read it. They have given their opinion on it. We have assimilated it. We have worked on this scene. Now that scene feels like it has to stay in our book forever and it shouldn't. So um, also these people that we are normally working with are not industry experts. We want to be working with industry experts on making our books better. So that is why we hire editors. We hire people to help us with this stuff. It can be useful if you have really smart people who are also writers to look at some of the pages of your book, but if these are just people in a critique group and they're not people you have vetted for a long time to make sure that their sensibilities match yours, then generally people get stuck in these critique groups and they don't finish their books. So suggesting a format change is going to make people in that group dig in their heels because a lot of people in these groups want to write beautiful writing and they don't really want to finish their books. They would tell you that they did, but they do not. They are not finishing a book a year or every two years and getting it out there. 
they've been writing this one book for 10 years or 20 years, and they don't want to change that. So they will protest when you push back against that. And that is when you reach out into these communities that you are busy stealing people from and bringing them to you. And you have a little WhatsApp group chat with a couple of people that you really like. And you say, I know that, my, you know, I know that Tuesday mornings will never change. Um, but what if we did a Wednesday night, just the three of us, where we just sit around and talk about um, what our plans are, what our goals are, where we're going to fit that writing into our lives and what we're going to do when we miss those goals, because we will. That's a perfect mastermind. In a mastermind group, um, if they can, they can happen in person or online, if you're online or if you're in person, cap people at 15 to 20 minutes. They get to talk about where they are, how they're doing, what their goals are, and then they get to ask for any advice that they may want from the people, but they get to specifically ask, what should I do about this particular problem? Other people in the group can chime in, give their opinions, and then you move on to the next person. And we need a timekeeper because otherwise we all want to listen to writers talk. I would listen to any writer talk for an hour or two hours. So we need a timekeeper and then you move on. And then the next time you meet, you do the same thing. And if you keep doing this, people in this group will get tired of saying, well, you know, my goal was to write 20 pages, but I, I was busy. And then the next week they say the same thing. And then the next, or the next month they say the same thing or whenever it is you meet. This kind of um, accountability is priceless. And you will do the work because other people are expecting you to do the work and you're not sharing pages, but you're sharing successes and plans. And you're sharing how you are rejiggering for the future based on what you actually did, based on actual real results. And it's so cool. So yes, steal the people you want, maybe create a new group and move forward with that mastermind. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. And the last question comes from Sandy. Um, Sandy says, hi, Rachel. I must admit I've been hesitant to reach out. I recently discovered your wonderful book, Fast Draft Your Memoir. I then found myself listening to your podcast and I'm catching up on them all. Enjoying that immensely. Your energy and enthusiasm is infectious. And thank you for sharing with the world. You're welcome. Uh, it has taken me to, a bit to figure out the best questions. The short of it is, new to word writing and strong reader never have been. I prefer audiobooks and can research every minute of the day on anything that tickles my fancy. I'm highly creative and executing thought to paper is my kryptonite. How can I move beyond doubt of which genre to choose or is this even a thing? I struggle with ideas from memoir to high fantasy to nonfiction. I've sometimes thought to myself, why not combined? Being so new, how the heck would that even look or is it not even a possible thing. I'm an art teaching witch and the idea of combining knowledge, empowerment with whimsy is delightful to my brain. Structure and bringing that together, not so much. I found outlining frustrating, but winging it makes me feel too unorganized. Still working on finding that nice balance and understand that comes in time. I followed many of authors from your podcast. I've even done like Clifton Strengths and still haven't tapped into the understanding of how is writing maybe not my thing. I'm normally a pretty optimistic person and enjoy trying new things. Ugh, clearly need some help here. Thank you for your time, guidance, guidance, and gentleness. I greatly appreciate any resources that might tap into such a place. I'd like to share my strengths with you, not so much for explanations, but more for your understanding of me as a person. Number one, adaptability. Number two, harmony. Number three, developer. Number four, responsibility. Number five, positivity. Oh, that's so cool, Sandy. Um, I am not a strengths expert, so I won't speak to them because I'm actually literally not allowed to, and I wouldn't want to mess it up, but I can see from those top strengths that you want to make a difference and help. And you believe you can because you can, because you can. So yes, I want you to do this. So my first thing to say to you is follow that delight. The idea of combining knowledge and empowerment with whimsy, follow that. You say structure and bringing that together, not so much. We do not need structure for a first draft. A first draft can be and often is, and is in my case, always is in my case, just a gigantic mess of words. 50,000 messy words, 100,000 messy words that don't make any sense, that aren't in any good order yet. You are positive that there is no structure in there, but you have written all of this. I would say don't make any decisions about what this book is or wants to be until you have as many words as you have told yourself that you want. And then you just show up every day and you do some terrible writing or some beautiful, fun, delightful writing. It's not terrible writing. 
if asked to judge it, you would say, oh no, it's terrible. But was it fun to write today? Did you have a good time writing it and following it where it wanted to go? It is a success. That is success. Um, I think that writing is your thing. The one thing I will say about positivity is only because I know this about myself. I'm number four positivity, I believe, or number five. I'm right around, I'm right around you, is that positivity um, makes us believe that we can do things, but when we don't do them, positivity, the positivity bucket gets little leaks sprung in them. So, and then your positivity is kind of draining out for the day. So in the morning, maybe try this, writing your words, just writing some words that they're not going to be good or great or life-changing or shaking the earth, but they're going to be done. And then your positivity buck bucket stays full, unpunctured, and you get to move forward with joy into your day and delight into your day because you have done the work that you wanted to do. I would say, don't make a decision of what this is. The book is going to tell you, um, you are an, uh, what did you say? Um, an art teaching, witch, I think, Follow that energy forward. Let the book lead you. It can be all of those things. Make, um, what did I call it the other day? An octopus house saxophone kind of book. And when the first drafting is done, then you decide how to establish some structure and how much structure you need, but you do not need it for a first draft. I can guarantee you that. I want you to move forward and start writing with joy. Um, if putting thought to paper is kryptonite, then experiment maybe with some uh, dictation, if that helps, or just write by hand in a messy font with a fountain pen in the candlelight. Later, you will type it up or you'll hire somebody to type it up for you. Figure out what feels wonderful to you to do, to get these words on the page because you are a writer and I want to see this amazing book that only you can write. And if you don't write it, nobody will. And that book will be lost to the world forever. Um, so please don't let that happen. I want you to write that book. I, this goes for all of you listening. I want you to write that book. I want you to write that book. So please go get some messy writing done. Thank you for listening. Thank you for these questions, patrons. It means so much to me. You can always check out um, the different levels over on Patreon. And there are some cool things over there. Patreon at patreon.com slash Rachel, R-A-C-H-A-E-L. Enjoy your writing, my friends. Tell me how it's going. And thank you so much. <laughs>